so far we've discussed uh, the underlying assumptions behind uh, accuracy, right? And we've identified that accuracy may not be applicable for every, every problem. And it's important to understand those assumptions and uh, to validate whether those assumptions are being satisfied for a given machine learning problem or not. A more generic way of analyzing the accuracy of a binary classifier is what is to use what is called a confusion matrix. And some people find it really confusing. So that's why it's called a confusion matrix. Well, it's not really. Uh, the name confusion matrix comes from the fact that it allows us to analyze how the classifier confuses between different classes. Let's say if you got a true condition, whether someone is positive for a certain condition, let's say cancer, and we have got a certain prediction, predicted condition. So that is the output of your classifier. So I'm going to say, just to distinguish it, for our case, this is going to be classifier output, right? So if for a given example, uh, the classifier predicts that uh, predicts generates a positive prediction and the true condition is also positive then as we've been talking about that is called true positive and if a, if a person doesn't have that condition and the classifier also says that they don't have that condition then that is a true negative and we can count how many for a given uh, validation or test set we can count how many true positives there are and how many true negatives there are so we can write the, the write that number over here. So we can write a number of true positives here, number of true negatives here, and we can also calculate the number of false positives. Those are type one errors. So that is when uh, the, a person does not have the condition, but the classifier says that they do have that condition. So we put that number here and similarly, we can have type two errors. So we can put that uh, condition, or we can put that number over here. And this matrix, this two by two matrix, this one, in, that I'm just coloring in green. This matrix over here is called the confusion matrix. And it tells us essentially how many false positives and true negatives and all, all those uh, types of errors. What is the number of those? And we can also calculate their percentages and express that, right? So let's take a concrete example. Let's say we've got uh, patients uh, for which we do a particular test. Let's say we do a fecal occult blood test, but it, you can think of it like any machine learning model output, right? So you can start thinking about machine learning models as tests, right? And you've got a test that generates a prediction, right? So for example, for a particular person, if this test generates a positive condition, then the test is saying that that person will have uh, bowel cancer, for example, in this case. That's pretty gory example, but uh, but I hope you get the idea, right? And we can confirm whether that particular person or a given person has that type of cancer by, let's say, using endoscopy. Uh, and then that is going to get, tell us whether the, the true condition is positive or not. So for a, for a person who has that particular condition as confirmed by endoscopy, and the test is also out, uh, test uh, output is also positive. So we can say that this, those are going to be the true positive cases. And in this particular example, there are 20 cases in which these 20 different people or 20 different samples, they have, uh, they do have that condition and the test is also saying that they have that condition. Similarly, there are a total of 1,820 people for which the endoscopy is saying that they don't have that condition. And the test is also saying that they don't have that condition. So that, those are the true negative cases. Now let's come to the two types of errors. So this is a type one error. Okay, so I'm gonna call it T1. And those are errors when the test says that they have that condition, but the underlying condition is actually negative. So there are 180 people, which is a significant number that actually do not have that condition, but the test the, that is being used or the classifier or the machine learning model that is being used says that they do have that condition. So that is where this number is coming from. Similarly, we have uh, a total of 10 patients for which the condition is positive. That is, they do have cancer as uh, confirmed by endoscopy, but the machine learning model or the test that we are using in this case says that they don't have that condition. So those are false negatives. So this is what goes into the confusion matrix for this case. 
And now we can go ahead and calculate different metrics on top of it. Of course, we can calculate accuracy, right? But should we be calculating accuracy? Does this particular example satisfy the conditions for using accuracy? I welcome you to pause the video and think about this for a second. For, for this case, the total number of positives in, in this case uh, is 20 plus 10. So that is the total number of positives. So there are 30 people in total that have this type of cancer, right? 20 plus 10, right? So this is a, the total number of positives is 30, right? And the total number of negatives is 180. Those are that test positive. And then there are 1,820 people that don't uh, test positive, right? So they test negative over here. So 180 plus 1,820 is the total number of negatives in this case. Is this balanced? And because the number of positive examples is much smaller than the number of negative examples, therefore uh, this is an imbalanced data set. So we should not be using accuracy because it doesn't satisfy one of those assumptions that we talked about, right? So, so that's why accuracy is not a good metric in this case to analyze. What you can do is to calculate something called balanced accuracy, right? And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute, right? So we can calculate balanced accuracy, right? So uh, that, that's another metric that you can use. But before we talk about that, I'm going to define some terms. And those are really important uh, that you that you remember and you understand and remember those. And those are sensitivity. How sensitive is a test means if a person has that condition, what are the chances that the test can detect it? So it is defined as the number of true positives out of all the positives that are there, right? So the number of positives is true positive plus false negative or 30 in this case. And out of these, the test that the, the test of the machine learning model that we are using detects 20 of them. Therefore, the total, the sensitivity of that particular test is 20. This number divided by 30, which comes out to be 67%. So at, we can say that this test is 67% sensitive. And what that, if you hear someone say that a particular test is, let's say, 80% sensitive, that means if five people have that condition, the test is going to be able to detect that condition in four of four of them. It's going to miss one person out of every five. So that is what sensitivity means. Similarly, I want you to understand the concept of specificity, which is the number of true negatives in this case, divided by the total number of negatives that you have. And that is equal to false positives plus two negatives, or in this case, 180 plus 1820. So specificity is, if a, if a test says that a person does not have the condition, what are the chances that they actually don't have that condition? right? Or out of the percentage of all the people that don't have a condition, uh, how many times is a particular classifier going to be correct? So if you say that a, the specificity of a test is 91% as it is here, then out of all the people that don't have that condition, the test is also going to say that they don't have that condition in 91% of the people, right? So that is uh, the definition of specificity. The other thing that is important to understand, especially from binary classification perspective, is what is called positive predictive value. It's also called precision, right? That's another name for the same thing. And it is, let's say if you got a classifier that predicts positive, right? Uh, in this case, the total number of positive predictions that are generated by this test is 180 plus 20. So typically we call that P prime. So P prime is the number of positive predictions generated by your classifier, which is 180 plus 20, which is 200, right? Out of these 200 predictions that has been generated, uh, positive predictions that have been generated by your classifier, what is the percentage of true positive predictions? That is defined as precision, or it is called positive predictive value. So that is true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. 
So you got 20 over here divided by 200 and the precision is 10. That means the classifier or the test that you are using is not very precise. It is very, it is sufficiently sensitive and is quite specific, but it's not very precise. And what that means that only a small fraction of people that the test is saying are positive are actually positive, okay? So that is what this positive predict predictive value or precision means, okay? So based on this confusion matrix, you can calculate other metrics that give you an idea of how sensitive your test is. So a test should be sensitive because it should be able to detect whenever a particular condition is there, right? Similarly, a test should be specific and we can calculate that on the basis of the confusion matrix. That means if a person does not have the condition, the test should also say that they don't have the condition. So specificity is, is also, high specificity is also nice. Similarly, we also want a test to be precise. That means whenever the test says that a person has a condition, they actually have that condition, right? So we want a test that has high precision, high specificity, high sensitivity, right? And we, on, on that basis, we can calculate a single number, which is called an F measure, okay? And it's simply the geometric mean um, of uh, these uh, precision and recall values. So sensitivity is, another name for sensitivity is also recall, just like precision is another name for positive predictive value, okay? So we can calculate on, on that basis, we can calculate this performance matrix which is called an F metric, which is a summary statistic of this whole confusion matrix, okay? So I hope you, are, uh, you have a good understanding of what sensitivity, what positive predictive value, and what specificity means. Now, this is pretty mechanical, like you can have the definition of what two positives are and what two negatives are, and you can use these definitions that are given to you. But in your head, I think it's important that you have an intuitive understanding of what sensitivity means, what specificity means, and what positive predictive value means. Those are three primary numbers or the three primary statistics that you can calculate on the basis of a given confusion matrix. So we want to test, we want a machine learning model to be sensitive. It shouldn't miss a condition when a person has that condition. Imagine if a machine learning model misses when a person has cancer, and then they never get treated. So that's pretty horrible, right? We don't want that. We want a test that is sensitive. At the same time, we want a test that is specific. And what that means is that if a person does not have the condition, the test should also say that they don't have that condition. We don't want people worrying about cancer if they don't have cancer, right? So we want a test that is specific. At the same time, out of all the predictions or of all the positive predictions that a classifier is generating, a sufficiently large number of those should actually be true positive, right? So that means that the test is precise. We want precise test. If a test is not precise, it's not, not particularly useful, right? Especially in cases when the data set is imbalanced, that is when it has a very large number of negative examples, but and only a small number of positive examples. Let's say if we have a medical doctor that whoever goes to that doctor, that doctor says, oh, you have this particular condition, right? Whether that person, whether the, the a prior odds of having that condition are very small. So no one is going to trust that doctor, right? So that is an imprecise doctor. We want, a, we want a doctor to have high precision. Similarly, we want a machine learning model to have high precision. So these are the different types of of matrix that you can calculate on the basis of your, uh, on the basis of a confusion matrix, right? And uh, you can read more about the confusion matrix at this particular link. Uh, it, it provides a, an excellent summary of what sensitivity is and what specificity is. And if you have this chart printed and posted in your room so while you're working in this module, it's going to really help you. It provides all the formulas for calculating, let's say precision, uh, for calculating accuracy, for predicting uh, true positive rate, which is also called sensitivity and which is also called recall. So all of these things are exactly the same. Uh, similarly, it has a formula for calculating the false positive rate, right? And it has a formula for calculating specificity, right? So you can 
understand the relationship between these. Spend some time with this chart and try to try to familiarize yourself with it, right? Similarly, it has a formula for precision. It has also some formulas for some other metrics, like what is the false discovery rate, right? And uh, what is the diagnostic odds ratio? But typically, all you need to understand from this is the concept of sensitivity, specificity, and precision. And if you do that, everything else can be drawn or it can be derived from these numbers, okay? And the third one is precision, of course, okay? So what I want you to think about is how is accuracy related to sensitivity and how is accuracy related to precision and so on, okay? These metrics that we have calculated, they are interrelated to one another. So for a given value, for a given test, there is going to be a certain specificity and at that specificity value, that test is going to have a certain sensitivity value or a certain precision value. So all of these are related to each other. So please go ahead and try to spend some time and also this uh, also try to understand the difference between accuracy and balanced accuracy. So read a bit more about that. What is the difference between balanced accuracy and accuracy? Okay, balanced accuracy. Okay, thank you.